Normally, I do my best to try to tie each diatribe to the theme of the show, right? There are a diverse range of topics that I'd like to talk about, but as a general rule, if I can't tie it to atheism or religion, I leave it out. But I'm going to make an exception this week and talk about a subject that you almost certainly can't have any interest in whatsoever, my teeth. I've got some pretty fucked up choppers. You may have noticed even at the beginning of this diatribe that I'm sounding increasingly like Sylvester over the last couple of weeks. And that's because I'm in the midst of a ton of dental work of the we've got to burn down the village in order to save it variety. Incidentally, by the way, it'll probably mean that there will be a period early next year where I won't be able to talk with you for a few weeks. Apologies in advance. So here's the story of my fucked up teeth. Age of 22 or so, I'm a college dropout buried in a mountain of student debt and working two jobs, both of them for a hair over minimum wage. And I'm in a situation that many of you are probably familiar with where I don't so much pay my bills every month as have my utilities turned back on several times a year. So when I broke a tooth, it was all I could do to afford to see a dentist about it at all. So he does his x-rays. He comes back. He tells me I'm going to need a root canal. And I don't remember the price exactly, but it was something like 900 bucks. And in the situation I was in at the time, it might as well have been $9,000 or $900,000 because short of getting a better job, there was no time horizon over which I could save a thousand bucks. You know, no sooner would I get a sum kind of close to half that amount than my car would break down or my wife would need some medical work or something like that. My other option, of course, was just to suffer until the tooth died, at which point they could extract it for a much more reasonable sum. So that's what I did. Cut to 10 years and a couple of fucked up teeth later, and my financial situation had changed dramatically. I, I wasn't rich by anybody's definition, but I had enough money to keep the lights on year round. So I went back to the dentist and I said, hey, doc, what will it take to fix my mouth? So he does all his x-rays. He comes back and he says, oh, you're going to need three X's, two Y's, half a dozen Z's, etc. It's going to come to about $14,000. Again, I don't remember the exact amount, but it was something like that. It, it was something like what it would have cost me to buy another car new. And at this point, I probably could have saved $14,000 over a year or two, but it's not like my teeth were the only pressing problem I had to deal with. At that point, Lucinda was sick. We had no insurance and none of the doctors could figure out what the fuck was wrong with her. So I continued with the suffer until I get rich plan that had been working so well for me up until then. So cut ahead another decade and you're in the present day, more or less. I go to the dentist. I say, hey, man, I finally got the 14 grand for the first time in my life. I'm financially stable enough and devoid of other emergencies and I can get my face fixed. So the dentist does his x-rays. He comes back and he says, it's too late. Now, don't get me wrong. They're still going to take my 14 grand. It's just that I'm not going to have fixed teeth at the end of it. And look, I'm obviously portraying myself in the best possible light here, right? It's a lot harder to sympathize with me in this story if I mentioned the $50 a day coke habit I had in my late 20s or the fact that I left a job with insurance to hacky sack for a living. I'm not trying to portray myself as a hapless victim of life, but mine is a pretty damn common story. Right. My my lack of nine hundred bucks a few times in my 20s leads to thousands more dollars for worse results in my 40s. The point is, it's really expensive to be poor. Right. If I was rich, I'd invested a hell of a lot less money in dental care to this point in my life and I'd have much better teeth. And this is only one of a million examples of the various poverty traps that can so easily turn temporarily running low on money into permanently destitute. Right, you'll often hear pundits talk about how many of us are one medical emergency away from poverty, but for an awful lot of people, it doesn't take cancer. It's going to take a faulty fuel pump, right? Before you know it, you're taking out a payday loan, even knowing that you're going to pay a trillion percent APR because the other option is not having a car and therefore not having a payday. Of course, if I could, I'd go to the ATM, I'd get that 900 bucks, I'd reach back through a time portal and hand it to my younger self, but I can't. So instead, the best thing that I can do is take 900 bucks and hand it to some other 22-year-old that's in the same position, right? I can't undo my own suffering, but I could prevent somebody else's. You know, look, we've had a ton of fun doing vulgarity for charity, and it's easy for us to focus on the big dollar amounts and the endless stream of insult requests. But at the core, there are real human beings whose entire lives can be set on a different course because of your donation. And when I look at the Modest Needs homepage, I see a mother of two who needs car repairs to get to work. I see a single mother of four who just got a job and needs some help while she's waiting for that first paycheck. I see a disabled veteran who needs help with his mortgage while his paperwork is making its way through the VA. And I see countless other people just like them who are at a low point in their lives and need to be reminded that the world is filled with people like you, generous, loving, 
caring human beings that will help another person for no reason but the bonds they share as humans. Right? That's what humanism is, right? And nothing serves to better evangelize for humanism than being a humanist.